Hi, and a very warm welcome here at Color Your Life. Today I have another mini album to share with you. Overall, it's a very simple one and therefore also wonderful for beginners. And for all of you thinking of covers and binding being close to rocket science, I have an alternative that maybe finds you well. So there's a lot to do. Let's start. We are starting with a 12 by 12 inch piece of white cardstock, scoring this at 6 inch, 5 and a half, and 5 inch, turning it around by 90 degrees and again scoring at 6 inch. Afterwards, all score lines will be folded. The two upper layers are one inch smaller than the lower ones. And the top layer will now be cut by another inch and then from the first score line in the middle out to the outside edge. Next I'm using an edge die, but it would also be possible to use a punch or even leave it as it is and just rounding the corners. My dies cannot cut two pieces of cardstock and so I have to use a little trick here. For the lower part I'm using a simple border die from the set and positioning it with the help of the more intricate one. After securing it with tape, I'm positioning the other die on the upper layer and pushing the whole piece through the big shot. And here you can see that the upper die did not cut the lower piece. So I'm removing the lower die now and the cut paper piece and run it through a second time only with the upper die. Just cut off any excess and now the lower part is a little bit shorter but perfectly matches the upper one. And now it's time for the papers. I'm always arranging the papers before so that I'm fine with the color and pattern combinations. Then I'm cutting the upper edge of the 6x6 design paper pieces by approximately a quarter of an inch as I want the cardstock to build a frame around the papers. If you were using a straight border die, punch or even left the edges as is, then you may have it much easier now. But with my wave border, I rather mark the position for the die so that the paper border will match the one of the cardstock. Next, also the inner border will be cut to the right size. And then all the papers will be adhered to the page. And if you did that to all the pages, the result should be something like this. Those of you who already know me by now are well aware that I usually sew my pages. That's not necessary at all, but I think it makes a huge difference to the overall look. And so I'm doing that today as well. And because so many of you keep asking me how to do that, I'm showing you today my absolutely standard Bernina sewing machine and my technique to sew around the pages. I'm generally starting at one of the inner corners. I'm using a standard zigzag stitch with a standard length. You don't have to do it that quickly, it's anyway double speed here. Just take your time to go around the edges. At the corners I leave the needle in the paper and turn the paper around it before going on. You should pull the upper thread of the two starting ends through to the lower one before you finish the round. I'm doing that very late here so that you can see it but usually it can be done much earlier. Once this is done you can sew right to the end. Then again the upper thread will be pulled through to the lower ones and everything will be secured with a knot and the excess cut off. And once all papers are sewed like this, you open the whole piece and cover the inner seams of the pocket with some tape. This protects the seams when we are pushing and pulling the inner photo mats later on.
I'm now adhering a little flap to the upper edge of the pocket to be able to close it later on. Then I'm folding the whole piece in the center and cut along the inner score line. By this the center will become less bulky when the page is folded. And now all inner flaps and the one at the top simply have to be glued together and the pocket closed. By the help of this little template it is easy to punch the holes at the right position on all the pages. And an eyelet will enforce each of the holes. And now I'm creating the photo mats for the pockets. They are also sewn and now I'm creating some pulling tabs. You can use almost any kind of punch or die cuts that are symmetrical and can be folded in the middle. These will then be adhered to the center of the outer edges. The loose ends of the threads on the mats as well as on the smaller pages will simply be covered with some little punch out stars and thereby secured. And so, the page is done. Overall, we will need six of these. The cover will be done out of such a standard ring binder today. I had a pre-cut one in my stash and I will now adjust it to the size of the pages. For all of you that are always hesitating to do an album, just because of the binding and the cover, this might be an ideal solution for you. Those binders you could easily get at any stationery shop or even dollar store and you only have to cut and embellish them. Here I'm cutting an old paper bag and using glycerin from the pharmacy for the old from paper to leather trick. Many of you are still asking about the little steampunk album which I link here at the top in the info card. Actually this is very simple. With a mixture of half water, half glycerin you are constantly damping the paper and frequently crumbling it. By this the paper fibers are breaking and will be glued together to long elastic chains again by the glycerin. The result is a very smooth and flexible texture. As soon as it is dry I'm folding it in half and using an embossing folder alternating from the top and the bottom. Every second section will be top down then and the repetition is not that obvious at the end. Next I'm going over it with distressings which only color the upper embossed parts. By using decoupage glue or gloss medium the ink reacts and now also colors the lower parts of the embossing in a lighter shade. Once it is dry the result is a very glossy and leathery look. I did another one with gloss medium and as you can see there is no difference at all. So it doesn't always need to be the expensive stuff. Now I'm rounding the corners of the binder and wrapping the full leather around. I'm using super heavy matte medium for that because I always get the best and most evenly results with it. I'm using double sided tape on the edges of the binder and liquid glue on the full leather edges to wrap them around. And as we want to create the impression of leather, we should also wrap the corners as if it would be leather. 
So I'm doing that by creating little folds to model the round corner as you would see it in old leather bound books. After all edges and corners are done, I'm taking the second piece and folding it in half. At the ends of the ring binding piece, I'm cutting it and remove a piece in the middle. But rather less than too much. The excess can be cut once you open it again. And then I'm also adhering this piece of faux leather to the binder that pretty much looks like an old book cover now. The edge here will be adhered with liquid glue. I'm covering the leftover with duct tape now to form a small strap out of it. At the ends I'm fastening a ring and a snap hook and securing each with an eyelet before cutting the strap in half. Next I'm fixing both of the pieces at the back of the cover with a jeans button. I originally did seven basic pages because I didn't know how many I could use. So I'm using the leftover one now and cutting off the back of the pocket and covering the holes with a piece of ribbon. By this I have an element on the inside of the cover that perfectly matches the pages. And for the back I'm preparing a pocket. Because the pocket is wider than the papers, I'm sewing one onto the center and cover the sides with pieces that I cut with a tack punch. Then I'm threading another piece of ribbon through the holes in the tacks. I'm securing them with some clips so that they stay where they are while building a bow with the ribbon. And so we have kind of a belly band where a photo or a tag can be tucked behind. So the last thing to do is to adhere the pocket and press the inside flaps firmly by using my scissors. And now it's time for the pages. And isn't that easy to insert the pages? No complex binding, no gluing and so on. A final photo mat in the front pocket and that's the album. Well, and once the cover got some additional embellishments, the whole thing looks like this. I kept the cover deliberately simple to keep the focus on the faux leather look. The inside pages do not need much further embellishment as they already have a classy look simply by the cut edges and the seams. However, this is absolutely personal taste and you are free to follow your own imagination. As usually, some pictures at the end. 
And of course, I put all the supplies I used in the description box below the video. So, get up and try it yourself. It's much easier than you thought it would be, isn't it? Well folks, and that's it for today. I hope you had fun and got inspired. And if you did, then please like, comment and share this video. And if this is your first time here at Color Your Life, then I would love to have you subscribe. And if you additionally click that little bell, you will be immediately notified as soon as a new video is uploaded. And if you like more inspiration, then I have here and here some other proposals for you. Just click on the bits to play them right away. Well, then there is nothing more to say than thank you so much for watching and hope to catch you next time again. Bye bye.